we're going to look at one phrase here. This is kind of a lot of stuff in one sentence, and it's going to take a few other units and lessons, and after two years, you'll fully understand the extent of this particular statement. But for now, I'm going to try to introduce it to you at this point uh, in the syllabus. So this idea that multicellular cells show emergent properties. Multicellular cells show emergent properties. So what does that mean? So uh, you may have heard a phrase like this. You are able to achieve more than what the sum of the individual cells could achieve. So I don't know, this might be uh, a Google. If you're working at Google, they might say, all of our minds put together can achieve more than what the sum of the individual employees could do. In other words, if you had 100 employees, and each one, let's say their productivity was measured out of a number of 100. Uh, individually, each person could contribute, uh, let's say, 10 points, all right, 10 points. So you have 100 people, so 10 points, you contribute 10, you contribute 10, you contribute 10, and they're all working individually. So in the end, 100 people times 10 points, you have 1,000 points of productivity. That's when they're working individually. But if you put those 100 people and have them work together, meet each other, bounce ideas off each other, and just work together as a group instead, the idea is that working together as a group, they generate more energy, more creativity. Their minds become linked together. And instead of just being able to produce 10 points individually, making a total of 1,000 points, when they work together, that they could actually, as a unit, they could not just produce 1,000 points of productivity, but they could produce something like a million points of productivity. The idea that working together could actually be more productive. And that's the idea here. Multicellular cells. Oh, uh oh, that doesn't sound good. Multicellular organisms show emergent properties. I'm going to cross that out right here. I don't want to start over. Multicellular organisms. Or, I'm writing with my mouse here, organisms, I forgot my pen. Multicellular organisms show emergent properties. That's the idea that when you look at me, you're like, that guy's obviously made up of billions and billions of cells because he's so complex and so deep and everything like that. So all these cells are working together, but they're doing a lot more by working together instead of just what the individual cells could actually do. So using the brain as an example, a single brain cell is called a neuron. And we know a neuron is pretty fancy already. Look at all those branches and all those things. But what's the purpose of those branches? The purpose of those branches are to make connections with other neurons. So our brain, the neuron by itself, a single neuron can transmit messages from one place to another. There is some DNA in there, okay, inside the nucleus. You have these axons. You have these axon terminals, and they're sending messages. A neuron by itself can generate um, some messages, but it can't do what the entire brain can do. And putting a bunch of these things together, if you put a, a billion of these neurons together, that's just a billion neurons. But a billion neurons connected together and transmitting messages creates all the things that we experience from emotion to pain to thought to consciousness to understanding that this is me and that is something else. This is very, very deep here try to understand how deep this is. So the idea is that the brain, as a multicellular organ, shows emergent properties. These are properties that things, things, characteristics that the individual cells themselves could not achieve. But by having many of these cells working together, you can, you can show emergent, uh, emergent just means non-existing if they're not in a, in a, in a large group. Emergent properties, uh, they're capable of doing, of producing a lot more of whatever it is than individual units by themselves. So back to the Google employees, uh, if you just had, you know, 50 Google employees working individually, they couldn't have come up with the idea of, I don't know, I'm making this up, the Google search, uh, whatever, I don't know. Not a big Google user, Google Drive, for example, but you put them all together like, hey, files, storage place, drive. 
So the formation of Google Drive was an emergent property as a result of all these people working together. So pretty fantastic. Um, so now in the brain, communication cooperation between neurons make the brain capable of thought, whereas individually the neurons by themselves considered separately wouldn't be able to do that. So the whole is more than some of its parts. That's the key idea from there. Okay? One more really big idea, which is going to require several lessons to go through, but I'm going to try to introduce it to you right now. Another key phrase here is this idea, and we're going to show you these pictures. Okay, read this. Cells in multicellular organisms differentiate, this is a great word, differentiate to carry out specialized functions by expressing some of their genes, but not others. All right, a lot of ideas that are going on in here. Let's start with this. Every cell in your body, every cell in your body contains all of your DNA, your entire genome, G-E-N-O-M-E. -E. What that means is if I go like this and my skin, oh, do you see that? My skin cells or like dead skin cells are flying off my face. If I captured that dead skin cell and zoomed in, opened up and looked inside the nucleus and took out all the chromosomes, there would be 46 chromosomes there. In those chromosomes, it's DNA. If I pull it out, it'd just be A, C, T, G, 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 C, T, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll just a string of letters, four bases, 46 of these things, so 46 strands of these things. In those letters, that's all the instructions to make all of me, to make all of me. And what a gene is, a gene is just a section of DNA. So a group of letters, uh, I don't know, it could be 300 letters long, could be could be 4,000 letters long, but a group of letters, a specific sequence of my DNA that codes for something, that codes for, specifically it codes for a protein. Uh, for example, the color of my eye is caused by a particular protein, caused by a particular protein. In my DNA, there is a string of letters somewhere in those, hidden in those 46 chromosomes, a string of letters that I call a gene that codes for my eye color. That gene, when actually, um, I'm trying to avoid using some of these words, but when that gene actually gets converted into a protein, it'll turn into a brown colored protein. And that's what makes my eyes brown. So the idea here is, this is really important, that every cell in my body, including this skin cell, that I just opened up and showed you. The skin cell contains genes to, for everything in my body. It includes instructions for how to become a heart cell, how to become a nerve cell, how to produce the enzyme salivary amylase, how to produce testosterone, how to produ produce estrogen. That's right, I produce estrogen. So do all other boys, so whatever. Uh, how to basically produce everything in the body. But this is a skin cell. My skin cell doesn't have to produce testosterone. Last time I checked, testosterone was produced in a different part of the body, not my skin cells. All right? What else? My skin cell also doesn't have to be able to beat like a heart, but the instructions are in that skin cell. My skin cell doesn't have to produce um, salivary amylase. How awesome would that be if my skin, if instead of putting food in my mouth, I could just rub food on my face and it would be digesting on the surface of my skin. That doesn't happen. But the skin cells contain all of those instructions. The point is every cell in your body contains all the instructions to do everything it needs to do. But my skin cell only needs to express, express the genes that make it a skin cell. I don't have to waste resources making teeth and bone on my face when all of its function is just to be an outer layer of protection to keep me moist and prevent bacteria from getting into my body. So here's the key idea, let's go back to these words here. So cells differentiate. Although each cell is capable of being any other kind of cell, they differentiate themselves or they become different. They become different and specific to their job, carrying out specialized functions by expressing some of their genes, but not others. So if I know I need to be a skin cell, I'm only going to follow the instructions that say become a skin cell. If I'm going to be a heart cell, I'm not going to follow the instructions to become a skin cell. Okay? Hopefully that's clear. That's the idea.
here. Uh, let's see if this clears it up a little bit too. Okay, here's a little diagram. So you have cells here in the beginning. You might have heard of stem cells. This is going to come later, but stem cells are cells that haven't decided what they're going to be yet. They have not differentiated, but they can differentiate, and then they can turn into different types of cells. What they turn into depends on depends on which genes which genes get turned on. Another way to say turned on is expressed express which genes get expressed so here uh, you have DNA um, the DNA contained with the nucleus of each cell contains the entire genome that means all of the DNA and these are A's T's A's C's T's and G's DNA if you stretch it out uh, DNA in wrapped in chromosomes actually is it contains genes the genes are specific sequences of bases A's, A's C's T's and G's and different genes are switched on or expressed depending on the type of cell, like we mentioned before. I don't know if that helped or not, but uh, that's the idea here. Okay, so DNA, maybe this section only codes for a particular protein called maybe melanin. Melanin contributes to uh, skin color and also to your eye color as well. If you only turn on another set of different genes, then perhaps you turn into a blood cell. That's the idea. All right, so two statements. Uh, hopefully, that's been cleared up. If you have a question, please post them online. Have a fabulous day.